Welcome to another edition of the Everlast Power video series. In today's edition, we're going to take a look at how to make a plug weld. Now, a plug weld is not that common a weld anymore, but there are times that you're going to need to make one and know a little bit about how to do it. Now, what I want to do is actually show you on a trailer repair that I'm making uh, how to replace the hitch on a trailer. And this involves several plug welds. Now, we're going to take the hitch and we're going to actually weld it on. The trailer in the picture is actually the one that we're replacing the whole hitch where it broke. So this is a very important type of weld that you need to learn how to master, especially if you have an old trailer or something that you need to replace the hitch on. Now there are a couple of ways to do this. You need to make sure that the hitch that you have is certified to be welded. If it's not, don't try to weld it. This trailer is not that heavy of a trailer, but the material used was too light and it was poorly designed to begin with. So what we're going to do, we're going to go back at the customer's request and put a heavier piece of material under there. We're going to be welding the ball coupler onto a 2 by 5 inch piece of square tubing. Now this square tubing is heavy enough gauge that we're not going to have this problem again. The trailer is only about a 1200 pound trailer, so this is going to be more than enough material to meet the customer's demands. Today we're going to be using the Power IBIG 160 200 series unit. Now these welders are plenty capable of making most welds on light material and it's a great unit to have in the home uh, shop or even into a small production facility. Now let's take a look at how to prep the metal and everything that you need to do to make a good competent plug weld. Most repair couplers or replacement couplers you have a tag that's fixed here and it'll actually give you instructions on whether to weld it or not. Uh, this doesn't have any uh, preclusion from welding and I've checked with the manufacturer that says it's okay. Now you can see the holes here that we have all the way around this. You can actually use bolts to go through here or you can actually plug these uh, holes here with a plug weld and then we can actually weld the coupler around here and around the sides here to hold the coupler on and you won't ever have any problem if it's properly done. If you've never made a plug weld it's something that takes a little practice. Don't try to weld a coupler on the first time out, especially if you haven't mastered how to fill these holes in. You might be better off just to bolt it on. If you're just beginning to weld, don't try to take on a repair like this or even to try to build your own trailer. This takes uh, a good bit of experience and training how to do this. Now, I've been trained and I'm showing you how to do this as an example of a plug weld. Um, but if you're doing this, you need to understand you're taking on legal liability and responsibility if this weld was to fail going down the road. It's a piece of 2 by 5 11 gauge material. It's actually going to be replacing a hitch that was 2 by 3 by 16 gauge. You know, 16 gauge was just a little bit too light for that. And of course the size, and you can see what happened in the picture where the uh, tubing broke in half going across the railroad track with a load on it. Now, if you're not an experienced welder or a good designer, you're going to have problems making a trailer correctly or repairing one. So like I said, please be careful when you do this. I'm going to take the trailer coupler and put it on top of the metal. Now what you got to do, you got to make sure it seats all the way back and it'll come to a stop when you've seated the trailer coupler all the way back on the piece of metal. Now you can see this is rusty. This is actually a new piece of metal, but it's been sitting out. And when you make a plug weld, your base material and of course your piece that you're welding to on top has got to be very, very clean. Of course, this metal here has a little bit of zinc or uh, cadmium coating here, and we've got to actually uh, clean up this base piece of metal before we start to weld it, or you're not going to get good fusion here, and that's going to cause a problem for you. So what we're going to do, we're going to take the uh, tubing here, and this area here we're going to be welding, we're going to take it and we're going to grind the metal until it's nice, clean, and shiny. Before we get started, we've installed a flat type disc here. A hard stone type disc like this uh, that we took off is a little bit too aggressive for this lighter gauge material that we have. We don't want to take off the metal itself. We want to just knock off the rust. Okay, we've cleaned off enough of it now. We've got about an inch 
extra material cleaned off wider than what we need uh, in most cases and actually a little bit more in others. So that's fine. We just need to have a good, clean, shiny surface when we put our coupler on. We want to have good uh, contact with the uh, base metal underneath the coupler. A coupler like this, I tend to start on the top rear hole. Uh, there's no particular reason. I just like to do it. It's just my method. Um, when you're doing a plug weld, you don't want to start off on the edge of the hole trying to weld the uh, top piece to the bottom piece. You actually want to start on the bottom piece in the center and start building your puddle and then you move the puddle around the edge of the metal until you weld it all the way around that little seam. Which won't be much movement, it'll just be a little tiny circular movement here. And when you get to the center here, you just want to actually gradually fill this until it's slightly rounded over. One thing you don't want to have with a plug weld is a concave weld. You just need a slightly convex or even weld here. And of course the sides are going to hold this coupler. These top welds are going to hold this coupler. And then we're going to weld the seam down here on either side and along the bottom edge. And then that should be sufficient to hold this coupler as good as any set of bolts will. Now I'm using 030 wire with this welder now. Um, you can use 035 or whatever you have. I wouldn't use a .023 wire to do this or a .025 wire. Um, it's a little too small. You can't get enough heat into the metal. Uh, but with this welder, I've used the .030 like this successfully before. And uh, we're going to turn it on and we're going to show you how to set the welder up now. Okay, what I'm going to do, we're going to set the voltage up to about 20 uh, to 20.1 volts. I've done this before, so I know this is a pretty good setting for voltage. Wire speed, sometimes you have to dial it in just a little bit according to the situation. I'm going to guess somewhere around 245. Maybe let's go to 250 and just see how that works. Now, as far as inductance, right here the center knob is an adjustable inductance that we have. I like mine turned about three quarters of the way open. And that's a good fluid puddle for me. Uh, you're going to find that you get enough uh, uh, penetration, but you're going to have a nice uh, fluid puddle. And for a plug weld like this, you want the puddle to stay fairly fluid until you get done. Now we're going to start on this back hole right here, and we're going to fill it in. Like I said, we're going to start in the center, and we're going to work our way out. So we're kind of a spiral type motion. Now as you can see, we finished this plug weld, and this is pretty good. Um, we can go a little bit hotter if we want on this, but we filled the edges. There's no edge left. We filled it completely up. We haven't over-reinforced it, and over-reinforcing doesn't do anything but waste metal and put a lot of extra heat in the metal, and you don't have to. And there we've completed another well. When you're welding a plug weld, you, when you get toward the center, if your open area is a little bit wide, you want to spiral your torch back toward the center uh, to finish the weld so that you have the nice completed crown.
Okay, so we've completed the plug welding process on this. What we're going to do, we're going to actually weld down the seam here on the sides and actually under the bottom. So we're going to take a little bit of time to do that now. Now we finished the plug welding and welding the coupler up around the edges here. Um, like I said, you can see we filled up to the edge. We didn't overflow over into the top part, but we filled right to the edge and uh, it's flush and even here. Now we finished the seam on the bottom side as well. And you can see that it's actually not that wide. It doesn't have to be. It just needs to have good bonding between the coupler and the base metal here. And that's what we've got right there. Like I said, if you're inexperienced at this, don't try this yourself. But this gives you a good idea of how something like this should be properly done, especially if you take it to an expert or somebody that's supposed to be able to weld trailers for you. Um, a lot of times your coupler is going to tear up, and this is going to have to be done uh, occasionally. Now, we appreciate you taking time out to watch our video. If you have any questions, suggestions about future videos, please give us a call at the number listed at the end of the video.